The following is a paid program that is paid for by Love Land Church. Welcome to Celebration of Love at Love Land Church in Fontana, California. With special musical performances by Chucky Perez and Band and Chuck Singleton. Please welcome Chucky Perez and Band. Cause we've got everything, baby If we got faith, hope, and love As long as I've got you You've got me too That's more than enough They said we'd never make it they didn't give us a chance No, no Our love didn't stand a prayer There's no way it could last mm-hmm. Maybe we were crazy Believing love never failed mm-hmm. Cause no matter what life threw us we knew our love would prevail yeah we did cause we've got everything baby if we got faith hope and love as long as i've got you you got me too that's more than enough we've seen the good and the bad been through the fire and flood as long as i've got you you got me too yeah That's more than enough, more than enough, more than enough, yeah, yeah. More than enough, more than enough, yeah, yeah. More than enough, more than enough, 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 yeah, yeah. I love our life together. Lord knows I wouldn't change a thing. Baby 
Loveland Church. Experience the love. Love the experience. Visit us at lovelandchurch.org. Please welcome Chuck Singleton as he performs Paradise. Come, my love, will you step with me to a time, to a place where your heart has only been before. Take my word for it, you don't have to work for it, it only takes a little faith. Come, love, come, taste true love. Taste paradise Till you're satisfied Sweet dreams come true Tears wiped away Hearts come unbroken Step into your brand new day In celebration of love returns, Chucky Perez sings his hit song, I Love Your Ways. From professional athletes to entertainment celebrities and members of churches across the country, it's been my joy to be a counselor on marriage and romance. And some of those great stories of relationships have been exciting. Some have been beautiful, fairy tale like experiences. Some of them have been very dramatic. Some have been violent. Uh, some have been happily ever after. And some have been, I hope he don't follow after. It's been quite an experience. And what we've written in this book are some of those exciting stories.
day that we met, how could I ever, ever forget the way you made me feel that day you took my breath away? If you should ask me, what's on my mind? What am I? Girl, it's you, and girl, it's you. I love your eyes, yeah. I love your smile, and when you do what you do, you got style. Your tenderness, and your sweet caress, and every time you. Chucky Perez's and Chuck Singleton's music is available wherever great music is sold. Black tie evening dress Rose petals perfume and all the rest And you Take too long to sing this song While you dress to impress I wanna be the first and last to say You look so fine Real men don't fall in love like this Like this, like this 
like this, they said But I don't taste the honey of an innocent kiss This player's going anywhere, going anywhere, going Church every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on our YouTube channel, Facebook, or lovelandchurch.org. Is this that night? Can the design just for two? Stars in the sky Yeah. 
For more information about Loveland Church or tonight's music, call or log on to lovelandchurch.org. Up next, Chucky Perez, The Way You Love Me. Diamond thing Oh, lady Cost a few weeks' pain But I had to say I love you I love you They said players don't fall in love But those eyes, your eyes, those eyes You stole my heart with one look from those eyes Mm, They rushed me home and I think I'm going Feel myself going, I'm going Day. They just go together. And this was Valentine's at Loveland. Thank God for you being a part of this. I'm so glad you could uh, tune in and be a part of this. Pray that you'll not only remember it, but that you'll play it again and tell someone else to tune in and enjoy Valentine's Day at Loveland. And we in- invite you to join us at Loveland Church as we explore the Word of a God who called himself love. And he showed his love because we know that the word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he sacrificed his son. Amen. God bless you. I'm Chuck Singleton. It's my wife, Charlene, and we say praise God for you.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today. We really appreciate it. But before you go, we want to talk to you about the most important thing that you will ever hear in your life. Because it would be a tragedy if you walked away from this broadcast without knowing if you're all right with God. Because, hey, you don't get right with God just because you watch a church's live stream. As good as that is, and as much as we appreciate that, just because you watch a live stream does not make you all right with God. And can I tell you something else? Even when you physically go to a church and attend services, even when you wave your hands, and even when you quote scriptures and listen to a good sermon, all of those things by themselves are not going to make you right with God. And you know what else? Just because you give money to a church, that's not going to make you right with God either. Somebody might be thinking to themselves, well, you don't understand, Chuck. I'm a good person. I do good things. I have a lot of people that look up to me and think of me as a leader. That makes me right with God, right? Wrong. Just because you do good things and people think you're a good person, just because people say good things about you, none of that makes you right with God. And we say that because the Bible makes this statement, man's righteousness is like filthy rags. You know what that means? That means that no matter how good you are, you're not good enough on your own to be right with God. You know, Jesus showed us a wonderful example of this in John chapter 3. Because when you look at John chapter 3, you see that Jesus went to visit a man by the name of Nicodemus. Now, you talk about a good person. Nicodemus hit all the check boxes. Nicodemus gave to poor people. Nicodemus helped out widows. Watch this. Nicodemus was a leader in his church. He quoted scripture. He sang scripture. He wore scripture on his robes. You talk about somebody that was a good person? That would seem to be Nicodemus. And yet, when you look at John chapter 3 and you see Jesus' visit with Nicodemus, here is what Jesus said to him. He said this, you must be born again. See, despite all the good things that Nicodemus did, despite his position, despite his prestige, none of that was enough to make him right with God. Jesus said the one thing that was going to get him to heaven, which is the same thing that gets you and I to heaven, is to be born again. Now, what does it mean to be born again? To be born again means that I give God all of my heart and I give God all of my life. And when that happens, I allow Jesus to lead me and guide me in my life. You know, Jesus made another statement besides what he said in John chapter 3. Because that statement that he said in John chapter 3, that was specifically to the entire world and everybody that was in it. But in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus made another statement, and this one was targeted at the church. Jesus said these words, I'd rather that you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. That is what Jesus said to his church. Revelation chapter 3. Man, that's powerful words. Amazing words. For Jesus to say, I would vomit you out of your mouth, out of my mouth, that's graphic words. But what does it mean to be lukewarm? That's the question. What does it mean to be lukewarm? Lukewarm means that I might say a little token prayer every once in a while but I don't have a real relationship with God. What does lukewarm mean? Lukewarm means that maybe on Sunday while I'm at church, I act like I'm a Christian, but the rest of the week, my life is so terrible, you would never even think that I know God. What is lukewarm? Lukewarm means God is something in my life, but he's not everything in my life. And the Bible says that that type of person will be ejected and rejected from the mouth of God. But here's the thing, guys. God has something better for you. God has something more powerful for you. And let me use this example as I explain what that is. My mom, Pastor Shar, she loved inviting people over to her and my dad's house. 
man, if you ever get invited to my parents' house, my mom will cook your favorite meal. She will make sure your favorite show is on the TV. She will wait on you hand and foot. She loves, both of them, Pastor Shar and Pastor Chuck, they love having visitors at their home. They will roll out the red carpet for you. But when you come to their house, Pastor Shar has one rule. You have to enter the house through the front door. You can't come in through the garage. You can't go in through the back door. You definitely don't want to climb in through a window. You have to come in through the front door. She insists on that. And do you know why Pastor Shar can insist that you come in her house through the front door? Because it's her house. And since it's her house, she gets to decide what way you enter into her house. Heaven is God's house. And since heaven is God's house, God gets to decide how you come into his house. You have to get there his way. You can't get there the Democrats' way. You can't get there the Republicans' way. You can't get there some well-meaning church committee's way. You can't get there whatever way gets the most likes on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. The only way that you can get into heaven, God's house, is God's way. So what's God's way? John 14, 6 makes it clear. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. See, the only way that you're going to get to heaven, the only way you're going to get to know God is through Jesus Christ. So today we're going to show you how you can get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you've never, ever asked Christ into your life and into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, today's the day you need to say this prayer. It's not a magic formula. It's just an expression from your heart to God, inviting him to take over your life. Why do we say the prayer? Well, because in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible tells us if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So who should say this prayer? If you've been running from God instead of to God, I'm talking to you. Never invited him in to be your Lord and Savior. I'm talking to you. If you're not sure, now's the time to get sure. And even if you've been in church all your life, even if you were raised in church, but you've never personally prayed and asked Jesus into your life, I'm talking to you. You need to say this prayer. Here we go. Pray with me. Repeat after me if you would. Lord Jesus, I need you. I open up my life and I invite you in. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with your blood and make me the man or the woman you want me to be. Jesus, I believe that God raised you from the dead just for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead and guide me all the days of my life. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I got good news for you. First, I want you to know you're not the same person you were before you prayed that prayer. You might look the same. You might feel the same. You might even sound the same, but the Bible makes this promise. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things have passed away. You know what that means? You are a new man or you are a new woman if you say that, said that prayer. God has changed you on the inside. The other thing I want you to know is this. There are angels partying in heaven right now because you said that prayer. You might not be able to see them, but trust me, there's a party going on in heaven because you just gave your life to Jesus Christ. And the other thing I want you to know is this, and this is a promise from the Bible, your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That means when you leave this earth, you've got a permanent reservation in heaven. 
in heaven for you. So here's what we want to do. We want to walk with you. We want to help you because you might have some questions right now. You might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute. Now that I've given my life to Christ, what's the next step? What does God want me to do? What does he have in store for me? Who should I talk to? Those are all questions that every Christian had when they first gave their life to Christ. We want to help you find the answers. And here's how we're going to do that. You reach out to us. Go to our website, lovelandchurch.org. Click on the link that says Respond to God. Again, go to lovelandchurch.org and click where it says Respond to God. If you fill out that form, it's just going to ask you for a little bit of information and click Submit. It's going to send that information to us so that we can reach out to you. We've got some gifts that we're going to give you. And don't worry, we're not going to come banging on your door, especially not right now. We're not going to show up at your address or anything like that. And we're certainly not going to give your information to anybody else. We would never do that. All we want to do is reach out to you to pray with you and help you get to know God better. So go to lovelandchurch.org, click respond to God, and we'll talk to you soon.